Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be making centerpieces for my Dia de los Muertos Halloween party. Now I'm using almost exclusively the products that I found at the Dollar Tree just the other day. So if you're interested in following along, you can probably find all of these at your local store and you're only going to need a few extra supplies. Things like scissors, a hot glue gun, uh, and a few other things that we'll get to as we uh, go along. Now, I haven't made these in the past. I was just throwing things in my cart thinking I'm going to make this all work. We'll see how it turns out. But I think I got pretty lucky a couple of years ago when I made this guy. Um, there wasn't really much to him, obviously, but I think he's going to fit perfectly with my party thing this year as well. I like the purple and the black. I'm going to try and incorporate that as the main color combination in the Halloween party, the Dia de los Muertos party, and of course, the skulls are perfect. Um, I have them everywhere, and Dollar Tree is loaded with them this year. Now, you may know that they're not just doing dollar products at the Dollar Tree. Some of the items you're going to find are in the $3 and the $5 range, like this lantern that I have over here I picked up this year as well, and that was $5. So that was kind of one of my backup options if, if this mess doesn't turn out. But let me go ahead and show you some of the things that I purchased. Well, I guess all of the things I purchased, really. And I'm starting with these colorful flowers. I don't know, it's a dahlia, I guess. So this one has got purple and black. This one is more black and purple. And then this one was kind of a red and black. I like these muted colors. I think they were absolutely beautiful. And of course, you know, kind of goes along with uh, this centerpiece that I made. And the other inspiration for that were these. As soon as I saw these, I knew I was going to make this into like some sort of floral centerpiece. So we have uh, these buckets, they were a dollar each, and they have the sugar skulls on them. So there were three different designs. There is the large skull with some flowers, the multi skull, and of course the mini skull that we just looked at. So we've got our buckets, which we will top with the flowers and see how that all works out. Um, for a base, let's see, we've got a couple of different spider webbings. We also have some spiders to go along with them. I like the purple glitteriness. I got some ribbon in a couple of different colors. We've got purple and black. We've got some foam blocks to stick in the buckets. We've got, okay. Now this, actually, I was amazed by. Dollar Tree has these sugar skull, sort of paint your own ceramics. So we're gonna give this a shot and see how painting works. Um, because this was only a dollar. Of course, if we wanted to buy a pre-made nicely done sugar skull, we're probably gonna be paying about $10 or so. Um, but I figured we'd see what we could do with a dollar. Now, there are two different designs. One's a little bit taller, one's a little bit shorter. And I am a little disappointed because I bought three of these I thought there were three different designs. I guess I wasn't really paying attention, or maybe there was three different designs and I accidentally picked up two of the same, but they're gonna be on different tables. Cause basically um, I'm going to be making three of these centerpieces today, but I'm probably gonna to need to make six or so actually. So we'll have some double up anyway. Um, I've got a few of these stands, they're candle stands. So again, three of them. And then in this bag, so these are, you know, obviously this black chunky stand, which I'm gonna use actually as a riser, as well as these little crystal uh, candlesticks. And they are of course a dollar as well. I use these a lot. You can kind of notice in my uh, display behind me, I just paint them black, use them as a little stand for my skulls. I like them, they're easy and versatile. You just can glue them on other products and there you go. And then lastly, I've got a couple of these um, candles which have some religious iconography on them. This is Virgin de Guadalupe. I, honestly, I don't know much about this whole situation, so I'm hoping it doesn't look too out of place um, or offensive to anyone because I'm doing my best. <laughs> um, I'm not too familiar with the whole Dia de los Muertos theme, but I'm learning, so it's slow going. Anyway, these are the main products, moving on. These are the main products we have, and we are going to make a centerpiece. So let's go ahead and start with the buckets. 
I really don't like the handle on the bucket. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to remove it, however. Let's see what I can do with a pair of scissors. All right, with the scissors, I was able to just pop it off. So I'll just stick the scissors around it, give it a squeeze and a twist. And there we go. So it, it bent the bucket just a little bit, but it's just a cheap little bucket so we can bend it right back into place. And you got a couple of little holes. I don't think anyone's gonna notice so much. If it does end up bothering us, we can stick a little Halloween sticker over it or any sort of sticker really and then paint it black and then it's gonna blend right into the bucket. Um, or maybe put some ribbon around it. I don't know, we'll figure it out, but I don't suspect that's really gonna to be too much of an issue. Let me just make a little bit more room here. All right, now inside the bucket, I figured we are going to need some uh, something to glue things onto. I actually wanted to get some push pins at the Dollar Tree, but I couldn't find them. I know they sell them. I've used them for other projects at work, but uh, I couldn't find them on this trip. All right, I did not realize these were a lot of individual um, little squares. I thought it was one tall square, but oh well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just press these into the bucket. That's gonna give us a good stand that we can use to glue things on. Let's see, I think, all right, if you don't press it down too hard, it's almost level with the top of the bucket. So let's go ahead and take off the rest of these handles and fill up the buckets and see where we are. All right, I've got my three buckets done. Now, one thing I noticed is if I was careful taking off the handle by popping it off from the handle side, you could make the handle pop off while leaving that little rivet in there. So I don't know if that looks better or not than the gaping empty hole, but uh, either way is fine, I guess. Um, anyway, let's move on. So we have the dahlias next. Let's go ahead and take them off the cardboard. Now it comes with a little clip so I think if we can take this clip off, it looks like the dahlia has a little bit of a stem. Oh, that was easy. It just sort of pops right off. That stem probably, yep, just sticks right in there. Um, so that was easy. And the only thing now that I don't really love is that there's a bit of, you know, you can kind of see the greenery, the little gap there. And that's what I bought this extra ribbon for. So let's go ahead, open this both colors. All right, so I got my black and my purple. I am just going to take off a little bit. I am not an expert in this at any means, but I kind of think that if we kind of unspool both of them at the same time, just get a good length. I think, um, let me see, these spools come in five yards, so we have plenty to play with. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off a little section here. After a little bit of trial and error, I think I have something that I think is acceptable. So I've got my bucket, I have my foam pads. What I've gone ahead and did was glue the pads together so that it has a little bit more stability. And what I was concerned about was the fact that you could see as you can kind of see if you're looking at it kind of sideways, you can see all the edges of the foam block. I thought maybe, you know, I was gonna cover it with this stuff and, and that didn't quite work because you could still see that green through it a lot. So I thought maybe I'd paint it black and then I thought eh, maybe I mean, that would work. But then I had the idea to paint it this neon purple. Now this I already had on hand. So you're not gonna be able to get this at the Dollar Tree, but you can buy it at Michael's or on Amazon. However, if you wanted to just paint this black, you could use Dollar Tree paint. But I wanted it to glow like my skull's in the back. I'm going to have a lot of black light, and I thought um, painting it with this fluorescent purple paint is going to give maybe the base of this a bit of a glow. And then if you could see this sort of glow coming from underneath the, the flower, it might just give it a kind of a neat kind of ethereal appearance. So I've got my purple block. Now we need to put in a little bit of this mesh around it just so that you don't have all of that empty space. Originally I thought maybe I was gonna do some purple and black and mix it around, but honestly I think it looks better just the one color. And since at least for this one I'm gonna be using the purple flower, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the black mesh. So I just cut off a little length of it, kind of give it a little bit of a crumple, a wad, a twist, whatever we wanna do. 
and I'm just going to stick it in, push it down a little bit with my scissors so that it it appears a little bit. Now I'm sure if anybody out there is like a floral designer, you're probably like going, what the heck is he doing? Um, actually, let's just try that again. All right, I'm gonna use maybe the little frayed ends up at the top, just to kind of give it a little bit of life. I don't want just a wadded section there, but it doesn't have to look pretty, just a little something to fill in the sides. So let me go ahead and cut off a bit more and fill in all four sides, we'll see how it looks. There we go, so it is not perfect, it is not beautiful, but it's something. So next, let's just take our dahlia. I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue around this stem, just so it doesn't keep popping out. Go ahead and place that like it was. There we go, we've got a little flower in our little bucket, and it's not awful. That's all I can say is it's not awful. Okay, but we do need to do that a couple of more times. So let's get to it. I'm just letting the hot glue dry a little bit on this one and we are done with three floral pieces. Now, they look okay. I think it looks a little stranger in the uh, monitor that I'm looking at than it does in person because I think most people are gonna be looking at it somewhat from the top and I think it looks relatively okay can't really see um, the the foam pieces the little wispy bits of the uh, ribbon show through this one oh this one's kind of hanging out um, so I used the black with the purple it's a little harder to see um, but it looks all right and then of course we've got the red one I used black on that one as well so you can mix and match these with the different pots you know obviously hundred different color combinations. I didn't see any other colors of the flowers though, so I think that might be it. All right, so I really want to kind of make a little pyramid with a skull, a flower, and a uh, candle. So I'm going to have to use these candlesticks that we bought as risers. So I'm going to use, I think, the heavy black candle holder on uh, the flower. And then I am going to use the smaller one here on the actual candle itself. And then we're going to have a skull. Whoa, okay, careful. So this is why we're going to glue them together so that doesn't happen. Um, but so let's go ahead and do a little bit of painting. I've got to, I think I'm not happy with the black color of this base. So I'm just going to use some of my craft paint in glossy black to paint that. Let's see, make sure I've got some here. Well, there's some sort of paint and, and it turns out pretty glossy. I've done some back there. So let me go ahead and paint these black. I'm gonna paint these black. And then the last thing that I'm gonna to have to do is paint my sugar skulls. I'm not looking forward to this because I am not that artistic. So I'm gonna look up some inspiration, try and copy what I can try and make it not look too awful. <clears throat> this is going to take me a lot of work, so I'm gonna do it off camera, see how it goes. I've gone ahead and cleared us some space so that we can start assembling the centerpiece. Now, for my actual party, I'm going to be using folding card tables that are more of a square shape. So this is kind of a simulation of what it might look like. Um, basically, I was thinking I was going to put down a black uh, base and then use some of that purple spider webbing just to give it a little bit of color and interest. So you're probably wondering, wait, what happened to the painting we were just talking about? And let me just say, my painting skills are not that wonderful. The first attempt just turned out absolutely garish and there's no way that I was going to continue with that. So I was coming up with some other painting options. Obviously what I did with that first attempt is I just went ahead and covered it again with some primer and then I repainted it. So with this fluorescent paint, it's going to glow under the black light. I'm really not sure how much black light I'm going to have actually in the table area. So I'm not sure if this is a good plan or not. I only put one coat of paint on here, so it's a little bit blotchy, um, but as you can kind of see in the background, I guess the one up here, here, <laughs> is the same or a similar yellow paint. It takes about three coats, I think, to get an even coverage, and then it helps when you actually shine the black light on it that it, you do, it doesn't look as splotchy, uh, because you can, unfortunately, see a lot of brush marks when you do this. So my second 
idea was just to cover it in this glow-in-the-dark paint and leave it white. Um, but it looks horrendous at night. So it looks good during the day. At night, again, you're going to see all the brush marks. So my third attempt was just to use my metallic uh, silver paint, which I think is kind of elegant and goes with the black and the purple. And then you can see the design. It just it's not going to stand out. And I think that's okay because I didn't want it to clash too much, I guess, with my wall. I'm planning to do an entire wall of these black boxes with the skulls in them that are going to glow under the black light. So um, just to give it a little variety, a little interest, I thought we'd do something different. So I think I'm going to go with the silver and then hold off on the others. So we're just going to do one centerpiece today. Now I had these doilies. Uh, on hand one of my subscribers sent them to me. Thank you very much And I'm gonna just set that in the center as just kind of like a base for all of these items You could you know if we're sticking to our dollar store theme They're probably gonna have something like this eventually or you could be very crafty and cut it out of some construction paper But I'm just gonna use what I have on hand So we're gonna start with my skull, but I'm gonna put them actually over here on the side for now because we've got a little more uh, crafting to do so the flowers, let's see, which one do we want to use? The purple with the skulls, I think that one is kind of fun. We will go ahead and use this one for now. I went and I painted the base of the candle, so you can kind of see the dull black that it was before. It's almost kind of gray versus the shiny that I uh, created. So again, I used three coats of just gloss black craft paint. And we are going to hot glue it. While my glue gun is heating up, let's go ahead and take a look at the candles again that I wanted to use. I also painted the bases. Um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with these candlesticks. Remember, they were just a clear glass before. And I almost thought that would be fine, just using the clear glass on it as well. But I had the other one black. I don't know. I kind of like the contrast of the black base with the candle. Um, kind of gives it just a, a little bit more of an elegant look, I think. So we're gonna glue this onto the candle, but first, you know, I'm going to be having, this is basically the party that I'm doing is a, is a pre-trick-or-treating party for the neighborhood. So there's gonna be kids there and I'm not gonna actually light this candle, but I still want it to look like a candle. These are called Forstner bits, if you're not familiar. Basically, they just let you drill holes uh, into materials. So it's got this sort of cutting blade on it, and it is perfect. This comes in multiple sizes. I'm using the one and a half inch so that I can cut a hole that's big enough for my uh, tea light candle, which will stick right in there. In fact, actually, you know, if you're really gonna make it simple, it looks like you could probably just put the tea light candle right on top, and actually, that kind of looks neat now that I'm looking at it, because you can see the flame over the top. But that'll be, uh, I guess, the plan B. So my first plan is to drill a little bit into it and then just sort of countersink the candle itself into it. So in order to do that, one trick that I've learned as well is take some hot water. So I've got my Yeti cup full of hot water. If I can get the lid off. All right, I'm going to First, make sure this is unplugged. I'm going to just hold this in the water for a little while to get the blade nice and hot. That's gonna help melt the wax and get you a nice solid cut. Um, otherwise, it might chip a lot of the, the wax there and it's not going to cut very well. You're also probably thinking, that's very narrow. This is a disaster waiting to happen and you're probably right. So I have somewhere some safety glasses. So let me get this warm, I'll find my safety glasses, and then we'll get started. Here goes. All right, that was super simple. And if I had had any brains at all, I would have put down something to catch this mess. So there we go. I managed to make a giant mess, but I cut the 
hole in my candle. So let's go ahead and light the tea light. And then as you can see, it's just going to sit right in that hole, line up with the top. And now I've got a candle that glows. Just gonna give it a nice ring of hot glue. Just center the candle on it. Hold it there for a few seconds. There we go, now I've got my candle a little bit raised. So we also need to hot glue the base of uh, my flower. I mean, I guess you don't have to, it could just sit there, but I don't want anyone to knock it over and this is gonna be outside so there could be wind. I don't wanna have to deal with any of that. So I'm just gonna hot glue everything so that it all stays together. Let's go ahead and move our center piece here to the middle. Like I said, we're gonna start with my skull. Have my flowers next to it, and then my candle forms a nice little pyramid. Makes a nice little centerpiece, I think. So there we go. That is my Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos centerpiece for my tables. I'm gonna have to make several more of these, but it's pretty easy and it's cheap. So let me know, what do you think? Um, I'm interested to see if you have any comments or suggestions, especially if you really celebrate Dia de los Muertos. I'm always um, up for some tips and tricks, but this I think is what I might be going for this year. Maybe, we'll see, stay tuned. We'll do a walkthrough, you'll get to see the final product eventually. But until then, we're going to be doing lots more product reviews, DIYs, store walkthroughs, and so forth. So make sure you're subscribed. Till next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care, stay safe, and happy haunting.